meeting uh, this year. Has there been any progress lately on anything? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, um, like everything else, we're, we're definitely having conversations like everyone at this time. Um, but, you know, I don't, I, you know, I, and I said this when we spoke, what, on Sunday, right? Like, I didn't know if we'd get something done, and then, like, later that night we got something done. So um, when you're at the meetings, you have a bunch of things, conversations, balls in the air, uh, concepts you're talking to that you know, if, if you don't have them done, both sides know you're kind of willing to be at a certain area, be, at, be in a certain area. So uh, that might move along, but I just it's tough to anticipate if we're going to get it done. League-wide, why do you think it's been sort of slow here? Is it one thing where one guy could sign and then it's Yeah, someone asked or? me that. You know, like someone asked me to compare it. And, I, you know, my answer to that is I don't – I've never compared year to year because our needs are different. And we're working on you – know, we don't need a third baseman, right? So teams that do might be working on that, whether that's trade or free agency. So I'm not going to know what that market looks like or if it's slow or whatnot. So we have the things that we're looking to do. We have certain positions that are set, accounted for. I mean, I can tell you this. Obviously, I know a ton gets put out there about us and so on. Um, I can tell you all off season, Aaron Bummer was a specific target. We weren't looking for a left-handed reliever. We were, you know, because we had talked about uh, to the White Sox about Aaron Bummer during the trade deadline. We tried really hard to get him at the trade deadline, and we couldn't get it done. But you know, that was what we worked on. Um, we didn't work on left field. We worked on Jared Kelnick. You know, so that's all that we worked on. Um, that's the only position player that we worked on. So. Um, and we've obviously worked on starter. So um, anyone speculating anything beyond that is someone decided to make stuff up. But that's it. We worked on Bummer specifically. We worked on Kelnick specifically. And then we worked on a variety of starters, you know, both trade and free agency. But that's been the offseason. Any speculation, rumor, anything else that we worked on positions outside of that, completely fabricated, completely false, completely made up. This may be kind of a ridiculous question, but how much do you actually enjoy the element of surprise? Because you've done that quite a few times. Um, I wouldn't say I enjoy it. I know that when it hits, my phone's going to explode. Can you confirm? Can you confirm? Anybody here? <laughs> um, so, but I, you know, then at that point, you're calling players and so on, and you're involved. But no, you know, we're not trying to uh, surprise anybody. Um, if it's done. And we're waiting on, look, it's done, the trade's approved, the signing's approved, but we need to get a hold of somebody first before we announce anything, you know, and things start to leak, you know, it is what it is. Um, but once it's, it's just, deal's not done until it's done, and anything that can risk that, it's just not worth it. I guess just for years being an assistant GM and even early in my career as a GM, you know, there's been moments where things have fallen apart just maybe because they've, they've leaked and so on, so it's just... It's not about an element of surprise. It's just um, making sure you get done what you're, you're trying to get done. Would you say Maybe you're not. still looking for a starter, both via trade or free agency, whichever whichever is? Yeah. So I wouldn't route. say. We're, so I guess the best way I'd put it is this: is that you get to the off season, people are engaged. Obviously, there's free agents, and then teams are engaged in trade. So look, there's good players out there, right? Both trade and free agency, and we're going to yeah. pursue those things. So. Um, but we're not just sitting there saying, hey, we're going to go just like we weren't going to just go get a left fielder, right, no matter what. We're not getting a starter no matter what. So um, I think it was important because there's a lot of false reports out there about us. And I just think it's important to up until this moment, at this moment in time, that, you know, the reliever that we pursued was Aaron, Aaron Bummer. The only outfielder we, we pursued um, was Jared Kelman. You know, those are, that's the only position player that we, we pursued. So... Um, but we have obviously explored there's been some really good starters available that have signed um, in free agency and there's been some starters available in trade that we've pursued and talked about so um, that's it I think any rumors beyond that um, I understand it's this is this is the time time of year but um, we've always said this it's player specific for us right it's not just hey we have to get this position let's just take whoever's available or um, it has to be you know we are we target players rather than a position the um, payroll commitments went up a little bit just because of the other two guys in that Kellenic deal. Do you, do you still feel like you have room to do something? Yeah, I mean, look, I, like I said, I know there's everyone's looking at CBT, this and that. We're going to be over. I mean, that was expected. That was a conversation with Terry McGurk. It's, that's not an issue. Um, and, you know, I've never divulged specifics on payroll, this and that. But I've still told you guys this. You know, I focus on the, the cash amount. So what the actual cash is out the door, what that tax is going to look like. So the CBT number for us, other than being over, 
um, we don't pay attention to it, um, but we do pay attention to what that dollar value in Texas, because that'll have to be paid, and what the salaries are, because those will need to be paid. Smith said he would be comfortable with the team right now if he went to spring training. Spoken like a good manager <laughs> helping his GM at the winter meetings. Yeah. But are my you? man right there. But are you? Of course. I love our players. I love our team. <laughs> you do? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, sure. I mean, look, it's, look, it's a very talented club, and obviously we didn't do what we wanted to do in the postseason. That goes without saying. But the regular season we had was obviously very strong. Um, it's always on paper at this time of year. So whether you buy into the, the pro projections, even our own, I always think that they're high, right? So, you know, internal, external, we should have a competitive, good club. What that means for win totals and postseason chances, a lot of other people can decide that. But look, we know we have a good team right now, but you have opportunities during the offseason to make your club better because everyone's engaged. Getting back to what Maria said, from a surprise of it, not just that yeah. it's broken before, you know, that you get it out before it's broken, but yeah. more of, hey, here's Josh Donaldson. That name's never even been out there, linked to the Braves before. How about that element of surprise? In other words, yeah, Sean Murphy. I don't, I don't know if he was ever linked to you before that. How yeah. about that element of surprise? Is that? I mean, look, I just think um, the fewer distractions you have, the easier it is to get things done. You know, because look, I understand. I'm going to get asked about it. Um, that's why it's tough. You know, I find it hard if our players' names are being thrown out there. You know, look, if it's true, um, then yeah, you're not going to see me saying that. I'm like, well, you know what? Got us. You know, it's out there. It's true. But when it isn't true, it's tough, right? So, um, and we keep our circle so exceptionally tight and close. And that's why it's not, it's definitely not the intent to come across as arrogant by any stretch, but. When we say if it's likely out there for a long period of time, look, something is breaking and we announce it a few hours later, I mean, it was done. You know, we're just dotting the eyes, crossing the T's. But if something is out there for days or weeks, and I'm sure I could go through everything over a 12 year GM career, but I think for the most part, it's probably not going to be accurate. You know, it just probably isn't. That's historically true. And if it is, then we're not doing a very good job. So I just think we follow rumors. I do for sure. Um, it can give me an idea. It might, maybe it's a player I didn't know was available. It might mean, might have make me call. Maybe that makes it harder on the other club. There's just no advantages to that. So I get the create fat excitement, this and that. I just, I can't worry about that kind of stuff, right? That's Derek Schiller and Mike Plant and his group. They're worried about all that kind of stuff, right? It's, I'm, I'm judged on building the roster and putting a good team on, on the field. Alex, just to clarify, um, you said, uh you know it's going to be ready to start spring training, yes. right? And Matt's going to be ready to start spring yes. training. Yes. Normal spring training. Yeah, right, right now, unless something right. was to happen between now right. and the start of spring. And yes. Ian Anderson in Ian June. Anderson should start a rehab, rehab assignment in, in June. June. Okay. So look, rehab assignment starting, meaning that's assuming After the setbacks, and we're still far away. Yeah, I mean, you look, you're building up to be a starter, right? right? So how long that takes, but yeah, normally rehab assignments, if you pitch, it's a 30-day rehab. Maybe back in 20, 25, we'll see how it goes. Now look, if at some point he's doing better or maybe he needs a little more time right. that gets pushed back but as we sit here today that's the latest on him that we're targeting a early june rehab assignment for him which would ultimately get him built up to likely july all-star break i think it'd be fair right the takeaway that you mentioned from the postseason after the season is that power arms i mean just looking at what you've done yeah no i mean it just i think there's a lot of i mean look there's we you know we definitely cut up a million ways there's a million things we could have done better right so I think I said this in a lot of my postseason media we had four extra base hits which is crazy when you think about how strong offensively we believe we are and how we were during the season four extra base hits. now I want to give the Phillies credit of course and what they did and their game plan so they have deserved but I also know that even with great game plans and so on I think nine times out of ten this was the one out of ten I'd expect our club to have more than four four extra base hits um, but we're not going to we're not going to significantly change the core of our team and our offense. We feel that's absolutely a strength. So, um, you know, in terms of bullpen and offense and rotation, it's just it's tough. Like I said, you don't want to make decisions based on a four game series, um, but you're not going to completely ignore it, right? And I think that's just the balance and the and the blend. But um, you know, as we're still in the off season and still trying to work on stuff. Um, you know, I don't know that I'd get any more specific than that.
how does how if at all does Max's walk here maybe affect like how you might look at this off season for you know 25, 26? No, we're always we're always aware of where everyone's at and their con contractual status, right? Contractual control. So look, we have him under contract for twenty four. He's not under contract for twenty twenty five. And obviously, anything beyond that, that's we're going to keep that private. I can go into all the you know the comments about how great he is, but I've, I've done that many times in the past. So. Um, look, we have them. We're worried about 2024 right now. We always have an eye on 25, but the focus for us is 24. Talked about 24 starters. What do you think Smith Schauver and Waldrop can realistically give the team next season? Yeah, I don't know that I'd want to put expectations on them. I mean, look, one's already gotten to the big league. So okay. the fact that AJ um, got up here, got the experience, that's only going to make him better for the offseason, his preparation. I thought that last outing, I know it wasn't long, but that last outing against the Cubs, the Cubs were playing for something. They had a great offensive club last year. Um, and how he performed was fantastic. So that was very encouraging. You know, he he just turned 21. He pitched all of last year, 20 years old, mm -hmm. which is incredible, right? He would have been a sophomore. So he's going into his junior year, and it's his second year that has an opportunity to be on this club. So uh, upside is huge. Look for Waldrip. We just drafted him, got all the way to Gwinnett. Um, he'll come to camp with us. We're excited about him. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. But when you're that advanced and you're doing that well, based on past practice in the six years I've been here. You get to Gwinnett, you get to Mississippi, you're a phone call away, right? We haven't been afraid to call guys up. So those guys are really talented. And uh, look, at any point in time, I wasn't, we definitely weren't smart enough to tell you Bryce Elder was gonna make the All-Star team. We optioned him. Yeah. So um, you don't know when guys are gonna emerge and, and so on, but when you, you have a group that has the talent to do it, I wouldn't be surprised. With how the season ended for a second straight year and you had some time to sit back and look at it and think about it and evaluate it, did it change the way you approached the offseason at all? No. Um, you know, I think it's, um, you know, you realize expectations, and everyone says expectations are a privilege, and of, of course they are. Um, you know, you realize, you know, six years later, you, you, know, you, you know, you never want to take the postseason for granted, right? But um, you realize in it, you know, it, it's a good thing because of the success we've had that hey it's it's you know it's not about the postseason right it's about going deep in the postseason and doing well and look at the same time you also know there's just things that are going to happen in a short series guys get cold guys have rough starts guys get hurt um but i have maintained this i think you want to go into a season feeling you have a club that's capable of getting to and winning the world series you want to start the season with a club so you know, what we have right now we're capable of does it you want to fortify that and be as solid as you can so um, you're going to need good stories every year, offensively, rotation, bullpen, and you don't know what's going to happen. So, um, I, but look, you learn from every season, right? I, I try to take something away individually. Um, I try to take what I was talking to our staff the other day about even just the off season as we're going through it, as we're going through things, just taking lessons. You know, we're in this moment. Let's not look back a year from now. What are we learning even as we're going through this now? So, um, Bottom line is, unless you're Chris Young and you're standing there having won a World Series, we're all in the same boat trying, trying to get back there. What's the lesson you learned? I don't know that I have one specifically um, because I thought I had all these lessons after 18 or 2019 and, you know, and then 20 and then after 21. Oh, yeah, I, I got it. You know, we won 100 games, 101 games, and we got eliminated, you know, and then, okay, I got that one. And then we got eliminated. We won 104 games. So the lessons are helping us during the season for sure the last two years. Um, they're not changing our fortunes in the postseason. Um, and, um, you know, I was having a really good conversation with Strider in the offseason, and just he was just talking generally. He's like, just because something works one year doesn't mean it's going to work the next. And he's just saying just generally overall. And I think it was a really good point, right? The most successful teams that may have been doing things a certain way, and you have to continue to evolve and continue to get better and continue to push, and we definitely try to do that. So um, I don't know that I would lock in on any one specific thing. I don't. If we win the World Series, then you and I'll probably have an answer for you at that point. Okay. You the the more aggressive decision makers in early in the offseason in recent years, is there a strategic uh, I think generally um, my preference is to lead rather than follow. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to work out that way. Um, but like I said, it's player specific, so it's not like, okay, we want a reliever, let's make sure we get one by November, end of November. So. Um, you know, you do your prep, you do your work, and you have your list of guys you'd like to acquire in the free agency or trade, and um, you try to get it done, and you get a quick sense if it's not going to get done, you have to move on to the next thing, right? So I think as a younger GM, 
Um, and I look back, I probably wasted a lot of time chasing things that if I was maybe a little more introspective, I would have realized that my, the likelihood wasn't good. And I probably wasted time doing it, I think, as I've gotten older. Um, I feel like I can have a general sense of what's real and what is a long, long shot. And you just, there's only so much time and so many opportunities and you just have to make decisions. On the rumors, how do you, I assume as a player, if there was a false rumor about me being traded, I mean, they're all human beings. How do you or like Snit like maybe smooth that over? Just is it just talking? Yeah, there's no saying, smooth hey, over. You use, uh, if you're on conference calls or Zoom calls, you make statements that you're not going to trade anyone that signed extensions and you make sure it's all out there <laughs> in all the newspapers and the TV stations. Um, when you're doing other media availability, you can say that you um, have no plans or haven't talked about any of your core players with any teams at any point in the winter, which that's a true true statement. Um, and we're looking to add. We're not looking to subtract. So um, we have not at this moment, like a hint could change, but we have not talked about subtracting from our club. We're looking to add, you know, in various ways. Now that can mean prospects, uh, but in terms of the, the core of our team and our, our outfield is set, we've been consistent with that our infield is set um, our rotation has room um, our bullpen is set we still have a spot we could do something with um, and um, that's kind of how we've gone about it you didn't name catcher you could use a catcher we got two studs <laughs> so I mean I view the infield they're part of the infield right they're on the dirt they, they actually True. step out there Alex, so you know go ahead speaking of rumor I just spoke to John Rossi with the MLB Network yeah he's saying Showing yeah, I can't can you speak. To, yeah, I say this. I guess I'd say I can't talk, obviously, about any free agents at all. Um, what I can tell you is that we have not. Um, we are very happy with our position player group. Uh, we had a very good offense last year. Uh, we've only pursued one uh, position player this offseason. That was Jared Kelnick that we were able to get a deal done. And we have not explored any other position players in any capacity.